Welcome to this introduction to creating charts and graphs using the design tool Canva. Data charts are a great way to add visual interest to your designs and to bring your audience's attention to important facts and figures. They can also be a creative way to communicate quantitative information. In Canva, there are at least 17 data charts available. In this video, you will learn where to find these charts, how to add data to a chart, and the different ways to format the different parts of a chart, such as the colors and shapes. Let's begin by going to Canva. In the upper right hand corner, click Create a Design. Charts can be added to just about any layout that Canva offers. I am going to use a presentation. To find the charts, go to the very left hand panel and click on Elements. Scroll down until you see the section for Charts and click on Charts. This will show you the different chart types that are available. You can also create a shortcut to charts for yourself by again on the left hand panel going to Apps and then scrolling down until you see the app squares. And if I click on Charts, it will create a shortcut on the left hand panel. Now if I'm somewhere else in Canva, I can very quickly jump to Charts. And if I decide that I don't want it there, I can click this X and it will go away. To add a chart to your design, simply click on it. I will click on this first bar chart. You can see that a chart appears with some default data. If the chart is selected, then on the left hand panel, there are ways to add data and format your chart. If you click away from the chart, that panel disappears. There are three ways to add data to a chart. First, I'll clear the data that's here, and then I can add it manually by typing it in. As I type in the information, you'll see the chart begins to appear. Another way to add data is to copy and paste it from a spreadsheet. So I'll clear this information and go to Microsoft Excel. Here I select the data that I want to use in my chart and copy it. Return to Canva, click in the upper left hand corner, right mouse click, and select paste. The third way to add data is to upload a CSV file, which is a comma separated values file. In addition to the data section on this left hand panel, there is also a section for settings. Here I can show a legend, which doesn't make too much sense since we only have one category of data. I can show or hide the access labels. And I can also show or hide the grid lines, which are the faint lines within the chart plot area. There's an option for swapping rows and columns, which we'll look at shortly. There are further options for formatting your chart along the editor toolbar at the top of the page. I can change the color of the bars, the spacing, and the shape. I can change the font of the text as well as the font size, and even the color of the text. The transparency tool affects all elements of the chart, including the text. This bar chart shows our goal for each month. Let's expand this chart to include the money that we actually earned. And select not only the goal, but the actual money earned. Make sure that my chart is selected and on the data tab, first clear the data that's there and then paste in the new information. The chart now has three new bars showing how much we actually earned and the legend has two entries because we have two categories of data. We now have two colors on the chart that can be changed. If you find that the chart is selected but the left hand panel is hidden, you can click this edit button and it will appear. 
You can also click away from the chart and then select it again. Under settings, now let's look at swapping the rows and columns. Instead of grouping the chart by month, this groups it by goal and actual. And if you look at the data tab, the data has also been reversed so that the months are now part of the legend. And then we can swap it back and the data tab will return to the original. If you decide you want to try a different type of chart, you can change the chart that you have by going to the drop down box at the top of the left hand panel. If you decide that there is data that you don't want to see, you can simply delete it. Let's change our chart type to a line chart. We have the same data and settings options that we do with the bar chart, but you'll notice that on the toolbar, we have some different options. Let's first make this a darker color. We can change how thick the line is. And we can also change the size of the marker as well as the shape. We can also add smoothing to the line or make it completely straight. If we want our data to be formatted with, for example, dollar signs, since this is money, I'll click on the edit button so that we can see we don't have any dollar signs on our data tab. If we return to Excel where I have data that is formatted as currency with a dollar sign, dollar signs will now appear in the axis labels. This is why I usually format the data first in Excel and then copy and paste it into Canva because that way I can set up the formatting the way I want. This line has five data points. According to Canva, the data tab can actually hold 100 columns and 1000 rows. If I click away from the chart, we can see under the line and dot charts, there are other options for charts as well. Let's add a new page and go to the next section of charts, the pie chart. Pie chart divides a total pie, as it were, into parts that stand for percentages. If I clear the data and enter only one number, that of course takes up 100% of the pie. Let's change the color to make sure that there's enough contrast and add a second number. I now has two slices. The data you entered can be displayed as percentages or as the actual numbers. The donut chart has the same settings options as a pie chart. In the infographics section, you'll find charts that track progress toward a goal. These charts take only one number, a percentage, so say 75%. The line weight can be adjusted, you can display the label, and you can round the endpoints. Also in this section is the pictogram. Pictogram displays repeated images or symbols. This default chart has 10 images and six are highlighted. A title for this chart might say six out of 10 of our employees work from home. Suppose an organization wants to create a picto chart showing that 23% of their computers require an upgrade. On the left hand panel, there are lots of images to choose from. You can enter a number up to 100 for your total items and how many of these items you want to highlight. You can also adjust the spacing and of course the colors.
and add a text box with your caption. As you can imagine, pictograms are very popular in infographics because of their visual appeal. Under other charts, there is a histogram, which counts the number of times the values in your data fall into numeric intervals, for example, between 10 and 12, 12 and 14. There is also another chart that does not appear in the chart section, and that is called a funnel chart. Let's first look at the data for a funnel chart. It is often used in sales. For example, you may want to track how many customers visit your website, click on merchandise, add items to a cart, and then actually make a purchase. And you can see the number of customers funnels down from 10,000 to 3,000. Copy this data into a bar chart. Then in the drop down box, scroll down until I find a funnel chart. Under the settings, you can show the values as percentages, as it does here, or as the actual numbers. And again, you can show or hide the labels and the grid lines. In 2023, Canva is adding a new series of charts that are interactive. You may already have access to a couple of these. One is a tree map, and the other is a packed circle chart, which is sometimes called a packed bubble chart. You can read about these on their website. I will put a link to this article in the description. When you are creating charts and graphs in Canva, in addition to the built-in formatting options, you can combine charts with other design elements. This progress dial does not have a way to display the label. I can enter a text box and type in 75% of goal. On this line chart, I can add a rectangle as a background for the plot area. I can right click on it and go to layer and send it to the back. Using charts and graphs in your designs is a great way to communicate quantitative information. If you enjoy learning about working with data, please consider subscribing to this channel.